So I'm going to be starting off this episode with a quote, which I think will set the stage for what we're going to be getting into pretty well. Quote, there have been many theories of design and many valuable ways of analyzing both graphic and three-dimensional situations. But the unique quality of this curriculum, which I'm about to present, is that it is structured in a way which quite literally covers any combination of design relationships which you may encounter and enables you to organize the abstract relationships for yourself. As a quote from Rowena Reed Costello, and she was born in 1900, and she worked uh, as a design industrial design teacher at Pratt Institute for 50 years from 1938 to 1988. And she actually helped develop the original curriculum for that program in 1938 with her husband and one other individual from what I understand. So as trifecta kind of formed this, uh, uh, one person kind of represented the intellectual approach to teaching her husband, I believe, represented the aesthetic approach, and he was a painter, and she took on the abstract approach. And everyone kind of described her as this kind of abstract individual who thought abstractly all the time. And here's this book, Elements of Design by Gail Greet Hanna, which has a lot of these exercises in it. Now, these are these exercises that, that Rena Reed had developed through her course that she calls Foundation. Now, you can actually access a lot of these exercises through this website, the Costello Fund at ruinareed.org, and it has introductions, some history, um, and we'll get into all these like little, real beautiful shapes as well here too. This is what we're gonna be working on today, something uh, in this vein, and I'll get to more of the details, but I invite you to join me in this kind of abstract exercise where I basically assembled about 50 shapes that she recommends, and then she recommend she she encourages you to organize them into these uh, groups of three, keeping um, beauty as the highest priority. So it's super abstract. Um, the idea is that her and her husband developed this course to just be as general as possible, and to also shave off by doing so shave off as much technique that you might be bringing through the door, or just having to require any technique. So as you could tell, once you have these shapes, you could make them in clay or you can cut them out or whatever you would want to. Uh, it doesn't require any technique. Um, so there are some kind of pointers to this exercise I'll be kind of mentioning and, and talking about in a little bit. But I just want to thank uh, Conjurer Cat for suggesting her and her design philosophy to get into. Um, I really appreciate that. I've been looking for some more suggestions. So... With that said, let's take a look at this website because there's some interesting stuff on here. So let's just go ahead and read this and then we'll look at some of this like really beautiful art too, just, just to kind of set the stage before we get into the uh, actual exercise. It says, uh, for those of you who have never worked in three dimensions, it provides an introduction to the three dimensional world and, the, and to that complex and exciting set of relationships that will challenge you for the rest of your life. There is no end to it. I would hope that some of you might pursue this search for its own sake, as the scientists do, pausing from time to time for a personal expression which could lead to new paths to explore. Uh, now, this is also kind of aimed towards industrial design students working in volumetric forms, so three-dimensional shapes. But I think as a 2D artist, you could do this, this exercise with uh, familiarity with drawing you know, perspective lines or creating cubes in uh, three-dimensional shape. And... The kind of the the outline of this exercise is actually presented pretty well on this page under methodology. And I have some other quotes from this book as well that I pulled up. And the next thing that she says is, uh, you know, if you ever get stuck, like this is a great way to go back to basics, get super simple, and then you can build into complexity. And it says, the study of abstract relationships is not easy. It is a long, slow process with its own frustrations, like any discipline, but the rewards are great and the trip is exciting. So I hope I may have your cooperation and your patience as we explore the first problem, which looks so simple and yet is almost a complete course in itself. It is an organization of three rectilinear volumes, and the objective is to achieve a familiarity with simple volumes and a unified statement. So... The example that she gives is kind of this thing where there's a dominant shape, a subdominant shape, and then a subordinate shape. 
She says the dominant shape should, the subdominant shape should at least add 20% to the beauty of the whole experience. And then the subordinate shape shouldn't be an orphan, but it should help kind of uh, move things in a certain direction as well. So let's take a look at these real beautiful goodies right here. So right here we have these uh, two shapes that are kind of married together. It's a you know, bowl instead of a plate. But I absolutely love how the dominant form in this one has a much lazier kind of uh, slower curve to the all-around form. And it has less of these kind of faster shapes. And then the subdominant shape is kind of slow, uh, kind of fast. It has these beautiful real quick turns. She even has a whole vocabulary on curves as well, which I'd love to get into. But with this episode, we're going to be getting into just talking about uh, just building these kind of squares and rectangles together. Here's another really beautiful one of this uh, picture that has generally kind of a, a predictable, not predictable, but an easy uh, line to look at and follow. But then at the very top, you have this real beautiful pinching and tapering as well right here. And then the secondary form, the sub subdominant form is kind of this beautiful curve that holds it all together. I absolutely love this one as well too, where let's make this larger, the space between this being cut from this curve right here actually kind of almost falls into this one right here. So it invites you to kind of enjoy both together. Neither of these are really taking over, even though this is the larger form. And I love how they cast the shadow right here and it almost cuts inside. I, I would, if I saw this shadow being developed in this, in the, on the shape, I'd love to just keep bending this until the shadow almost cut it perfectly in half. It'd be really cool. Uh, they get into some more super abstract stuff. And supposedly she got into, she really influenced um, a lot of the industrial designers that you know, kind of came after her for generations. So I'm really excited to check this out. Here's another thing on convexity. So kind of looking at and appreciating the kind of the difference in, in the, the relationship that's being formed between these two shapes or several shapes as we have them. Convexity is kind of pushing into this negative space and they kind of generate these different feelings as a result of this. So I really love this kind of stuff here. Here we get into some kind of like 90s looking stuff for sure. On her resources page, there's also uh, some really cool videos. And then there's this really cool video that shows kind of her doing her instruction and kind of showing uh, intro students kind of her idea of these, putting these abstract shapes together and looking at them from all these different angles, which, I, which she says is the most important. It can't just be from one angle. It's gotta be from all these different angles. And so I, you know, she's basically grooming these students to do kind of architecture, a, a, assembling these big blocks in a much larger form. But I'd love to do that kind of stuff in my art, but I'm also putting a lot of things uh, in space, floating in space. So I'm gonna be doing some of this exercise just without a ground, and then I'll be adding a ground to it as well. So kind of showing the, the different planes, I'll talk about the specifics of this exercise, but the idea is just to keep everything in like a specific axis or within static axes, she calls them. And yeah, I think that's a good introduction there. So then I just want to say before we get into the exercise, there's a couple of ways that you can support me if you're interested. One is by collecting my NFTs on Hick at Nunc. And then if you like, I also offer uh, reference models for 2D artists to practice and use as reference. Um, those are at the Gumroad and both links are in the description as well. So uh, I'm going to read to you another quote that she has. She says, um, at first, working with three-dimensional forms in this way is difficult, but soon you will begin to speak this language. You really have to make them beautiful. That sounds pretentious. How can you make three blocks beautiful? But I know that you can. That's her quote. And so we'll probably get into a bit of a flow state pretty soon here. And through that flow state kind of try to describe and express these ideas that I have coming to me. If I want to bridge the desire to want to make things for you guys, the audience, uh, like make them like appear beautiful and then bridge that gap and actually try to 
I tap into the desire to want to express shapes in a way that is actually satisfying to me. And if we do so, I think we'll be in, in a really good position because I'll be able to talk about what I'm doing. So um, that way I can just, you guys can just kind of see my thought process and what makes things interesting to me. So the outline says create 50 rectilinear volumes, which I've done here. I believe there's just about 50 there with strong edges. So I added a little bevel to all of them, just enough to maybe catch a little bit of light on the end. You can hardly even see it. So she wants really strong edges. Organize the rectangles in groups of three with this in mind. Uh, and then these are the kind of the, this is the instruction here. She, she says, first of all, appreciate the qualities of contrasting shapes. Um, so basically the, you know, don't just keep going for the same thing. Like you want to have a, a variety going on. Um, establish relationships by choosing dominant, subdominant, and subordinate forms. So sub, sub, uh, dominant forms she was saying are more like kind of tend to be the largest part of the composition. Subdominant would be something that complements it, but is maybe a little bit smaller, maybe like this compared to this one or here. And then the final one subordinate would be something really small, which just adds more kind of variety and spice to the whole thing and kind of changes the magnetism between the first two. She says, be aware of proportions. You have inherent comparative and overall proportions. And so inherent proportions are just, you know, what are the proportions I'm working with on each individual uh, rec rectilinear volume? But then comparative is if I were to say, okay, how are these two proportions? What are they like? Uh, let's, let's compare them side by side. You know, this one has a bit more depth than this one does. This one is like kind of much more of a rectangle. This one's more of a box, for instance. And uh, overall, so if I were to have three and I were to squint, you know, what would this kind of look like from a distance? Um, that would be the overall proportion of objects. And she has an interesting note here. She says, never emphasize the cube. She says, uh, also carefully position the axes and keep them static. So her whole thing was, you know, eventually we're going to get into all these like beautiful, like changes of form and shape and positions and all that kind of stuff. And we're going to be swinging the axes around, for instance, like this kind of stuff. Uh, but she wants now for this first exercise to just be static. So one direction, the other direction, the other direction. And maybe if I'm going to rotate them at all, just keep them on that axis, those three axes as well. So nothing kind of diagonal is basically what she's saying by static axes. She says, always conceive a design from all positions. So it's not just creating a design that has, you know, looks good from like this angle or whatever it would be. She's saying like, it's got to be pleasing from all different directions here. And then she says, uh, consider how the volumes are joined. So there's a different, she actually lays out three approaches to joining volumes together. The first one, it would be piercing. So that'd be an example of this piercing into the small subordinate form, piercing into the dominant form like that. The next one would be wedging. So I would assume wedging would be something like if this was on top of that somehow, and then I were to bring this up and then maybe I could tuck this in, like I wedge it into the corner right here without really any overlap. That would be an example of wedging. And then the final one is cradling. So I would assume this just would be an example of cradling where you have a bigger form kind of holding the smaller form. And this might be cradling right here as well, uh, as long as they're not really, there we go. I might play with some snapping a little bit later on. So then she says, while you're doing this, ask yourself, is there a contrast between the forms? Do they complement each other? And is the dominant form in the most pr prominent position? She says, think, quote, think of the balance of your design as if you were a dancer. If the axes of your arms and legs don't support the axes of your neck and torso, you'll fall over. And just a couple more quotes, and then we'll get into the exercise and start just talking about my thoughts developing this kind of stuff here. Another quote from the book is by Gina Caspi. She says, quote, if the only thing a student learns from this first problem is that the one thing is that one thing can make another look good by being near it, they've learned something very valuable. And finally, Reed Costello says, quote, the difference between beautiful and ordinary form is the sensitivity of these proportions. So we'll just try to keep all that in mind. I might come back around to these here and there. And yeah, I think that's it. So 
first let's just grab some you know some an interesting uh peeling dominant form any of these big guys here so i'm looking at this guy over here i'm going to pull this out i want to get something that so this is kind of tall and a little, a little bit more narrow maybe the size of like a a novel or page or something like that so i want my sub subdominant form to be something a bit more a bit different so this one's kind of calling my name out here and by the way i haven't done this yet this is uh i'm, I'm warming up live right now so um the first one or two might look like total junk and i might be able to look at them after i'm all done here but uh and then just kind of make some modifications but you kind of get to experience this with me as i try to make this um this exercise kind of i've tried to breathe life into this exercise here so i think maybe this one this one looks like it's pretty long and it's super flat like a board of wood so i'll go ahead and take that and put that over there so that'll be my first three shapes and we also already know which one's the dominant one right here so i need to start to consider before i even introduce this one right here how i can move these together to make something kind of interesting so what i'm thinking is maybe if i look from the front maybe making this shape kind of build this l out that's one way to go let's try some different positions here so i want the whole idea she was saying is to make this to have the subdominant form make the dominant form more pleasing so let's turn the outline off here okay that'd be great now i can click these without the outline being there so maybe i should make it a rule to have everything at least touching each other or at least try to make them look like they're touching each other 3d space so that one's kind of boring there's nothing really exciting happening right there if i were to do something like this it kind of gives an interesting little ledge to it what if i were to turn it on its side bring it down here and i think what i'm trying to try to do is actually push it inside right here and see what happens yeah, that's kind of interesting. Hmm. So that kind of creates this little space that feels like it kind of en encloses an area. And do I find that very satisfying? I don't know. I, I don't think that's very interesting to me yet. I kind of like the one of it hanging. Now, obviously I can go ahead and since I work in this like kind of floating spaces, I could probably just break it off if I really wanted to, but I'm going to play with it actually kind of stuck to and hearing. Now I'm putting in all these corners. I wonder what would happen if I were to put it, say like somewhere in the middle. So boring. If I were to put it right over here. And then the other position I didn't really try is to move this over on this side and see kind of what comes of it. Again, that's, it's more of that enclosed space. So I think what I'm going to do with on this and these shapes is to actually have this one kind of hanging. I really like that. In fact, there's kind of interesting thing going on right here when it's actually hanging off. Here it is. See, making it kind of just shoot right down the middle actually makes it really boring. But if I were to make it swing just a little bit, hang off like this, that gives a lot more interest. And then maybe if I look at it from the top to move this other way one more time. So if I were to give it just a bit of a gap right there. Hmm. And what if it's hanging off like this right here? You know, I suppose the subdominant form, she says to make it beautiful, but I also wonder how to use the subdominant form to exaggerate the, sh the kind of the size and shape of this right here. And I think that's doing it pretty well. It shows how tall it would be. And then maybe some type of, some piece of like a ledge or awning or that's being supported by maybe some type of structure underneath. No, I think that's pretty satisfying. So let's bring in the subdominant form. It's actually 
a subordinate form. It's actually pretty big, to be honest with you. It's actually kind of, yeah, it's much bigger than this one. So I was just looking at it this way right here. So why don't we go back and we'll get something that's even smaller because I think that would be a good sub dominant, uh, sub dominant form. Yeah, I think this will be good right here. All right, so now she was recommending kind of making this sub dominant subordinate form kind of bring a little bit of spice and variety to the whole thing. So maybe if I were to position it in a way like this, or there's more kind of harmony between everything, a bit of a space being created. It's kind of interesting. Let's frame that a little bit there. Here we go. Hmm. So it kind of reads kind of interestingly with this kind of space coming down. And then when I look at it from this side, I really like that gap that's created inside that space. And well, that's lovely right there, that perspective. I'm thinking about this little shape right here that's being created. And there's some variety inside of this kind of secondary shape as well, because it the third, the tertiary shape kind of cuts it out a little bit. Yeah, this is pretty fun. I actually do like this quite a bit. This position is, you know, it's, um, hmm. So that kind of leads a bit to a bit of intrigue and mystery when it comes to the third shape. And I wonder if looking from over here, yeah, that kind of, that's pretty interesting. You lose the third shape from that view, but that still feels pretty good over there. So yeah, I like this, it's pretty good. So that's my first little uh, exercise there. I'll move this up and out of the way. Let's uh, go with the next one here and see what we can come up with. So this is a pretty big shape I'm looking at over here. It's pretty long too. So maybe I can take something that is Maybe vertical as well. This one kind of reminds me of the shape that we're just playing with a little too much. Let's do this, something a little bit more box shaped. And then something really itty bitty, either this guy right here, or this guy, yeah, let's go with the long one right here. Okay, let's see what we can do with these here. God, that. That clay color is just starting to get boring very, very quickly. Let's bring this out here. It's a little more muted. Bring that up there. Okay, so let's move this out of the way and start to think about this. So, what can I do? How can I use this shape right here? to make the larger shape much more interesting, to complement it. So I could give it more length by putting it maybe side by side. Let's try that out. Yeah. Let's uh, pierce into it somehow. So if I were to do this and punch it over like that, well, that's very interesting. It's kind of like it's locked onto it. Again, this is so abstract. Like, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going by whatever feels good to me. And if you were to do this exercise or process yourself, you're going to find shapes and positions of things that are so unlike what I find interesting. This is just meant to wake up the abstract mind, kind of the right brained mind, and just kind of have fun with it. So that's pretty cool. I like that right there, but I didn't really play with enough options here. So let's let's tinker around a little bit. So I put it on top, this whole cradling idea. The cradling on its own back here is pretty boring. And the size of this middle space kind of makes it a little chunky. Let's look at the 
uh, sideways space when I do this. See, this actually creates a bit more interest right here. I like the cutouts that I was, de I was developing right there. So, see if I do this from the side. This is looking like someone that's like sledding or something like that. <laughs> it looks kind of just like a the most simple human shape you can ever imagine. And then, what if I spin it a little bit on its side? Hmm. Yeah, I, I wasn't complimenting it over here at all. If I were to do something like this, well, that's kind of neat. You know, it's almost like it creates this really long hallway. And this might be like an entrance or something like that. I kind of like that. If I push it down, then we're playing too much with um, free floating space. And if I were to move up here, it would be almost like um, some type of like office quarters or something that like people can hang out and look down on. And they can also look down this like little plaza down here. I'm just thinking like if there was architecture. But uh, I'm going to go with this little position right here. I think that's pretty cool. Let's try different areas here. See if that complements it at all. Okay, so this makes it a space where it's not symmetrical, where say if there is an entrance right here, individual can walk in and kind of move into to a certain direction. So it kind of forces direction. I kind of think that's interesting. All right, let's, let's play with this little baby shape right here and see what happens as I move it around. See what it does to the all around composition. just so small. I think if I were to incorporate it in, I'd want it to kind of be almost like a flag, like it's be sticking out. Okay, well, that's kind of interesting there. Let's bring this down a little bit. I'm gonna cradle it, or I guess that'd be wedging it in this case. Okay, that's kind of interesting there. I like this right here, this little detail, like the corners are so small compared to the rest of these really large corners here. So it kind of forces an appreciation of the larger shapes and then down to something more minute. So I definitely like that. That's pretty nice. If I were to do something like this, it just kind of feels a little bit out of place, like a little wonky. It feels like this, it's kind of more beholden to the secondary shape, not so much the primary shape. So this spot right here was really helping both. So perhaps I can flip it on its other side here. Let's see what comes of it. Okay, so now this is becoming a bit of a frame, actually. Well, that's kind of interesting. It's almost like, you know, the Getty the whole place was designed to be all these like um, frames when you're walking around you suddenly see a part of LA that's just framed just gorgeously it's downtown or if it's the ocean it's really really clever so this kind of reminds me of that approach uh, let's go over here that's what I was looking at okay if I did that and if I move this in just a little bit to kind of complement this little space I have right here Okay. Hmm. If I were to do that, I feel like, man, if I can cut it up like this here. So it would, this little window I'm creating right here would have to lead to something interesting. So let's see if I could bring this back a little bit like that. I feel like, you know, if I were as a, person on the ground walking around. I want this to be a frame of the sky or something really interesting, maybe mountains in the background. Then, or maybe if there was something actually on top of this kind of larger structure, but 
assuming that there wouldn't be. So it had the framing stuff to have a landscape or clouds. Now from this side, it's not very interesting. I don't think, uh, but it, we're looking at it dead on. So, you know, this does create some pretty interesting shapes right here. Let's see if I can move it around just a little bit. Hmm. Okay, now let's play with this position of this uh, tertiary form. If I bring it back just a little bit further here. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's pretty boring. It's also just kind of sticking out of nowhere. Like there's no interesting relationship. It it kind of brings to light this kind of dead space right here, and it's not a very pleasant dead space. I don't really care for this at all. Hmm. That's not really doing anything for me either. If I were to do this right here. So that's pretty cool. I actually do like that. It, it's not really that visible from a, a lot of these other positions, but this might be kind of a, a cool looking like porch or something like that. But it doesn't really complement the this figure too well. And if I were to bring this over here, the small shape, and then flip it around. Oh, okay, that's kind of interesting. Now that starts to balance out both sides here. I see, okay. Well, that gives a lot more interest to all this down here. So let's look again what this looked like if it was somewhere over here, right? Just somewhere where this smaller shape is not at this end here. And it's pretty interesting because it kind of puts all the weight down there. But if you're looking over here, like there's absolutely nothing of of interest going on. It's all down there. Which, you know, you can weight things as, as much as you like to, but I actually am finding this to be very, very interesting. And let's see if I could play with it on the opposite side as this secondary block over here. Okay. I do like bringing in a little bit. It gives some of that detail to the corners. Let's look at it from the side. Hmm. Should it be smaller or taller than the secondary form? Hmm. So it's a little bit taller, but it gives it a nice balance. It's almost this light little triangle happening right here. And we'll just bring it, push it back and forth a little bit here too. Yeah, that feels pretty good. I'm surprised. I actually was going to go with the the co compilation of the with the small form kind of hanging off the smaller, the, the secondary form. And then the first one that we saw this kind of orientation was this, which kind of gives a bit of a, a connection between these two, a bit of a relationship. And I can even spin this 90 degrees and see what happens. There we go. Yeah, by making it flatter like the like I just did right there leads to a bit more of a connection between these two. But I think spinning it like this actually kind of upsets things in a very interesting way. Oh, let's try it one more time. We'll spin it here. Wow, oh, that's really nice. See, that's super pleasing. Creates these wonderful this wonderful negative space. If I just move this away, you could see like the negative space is pretty simple right here. Just this right here. But if I bring it back, then I have a lot more variety inside the negative space. So I really like that. And it's pretty satisfying right here too. It gives us really interesting balance. There's a bit of a taper going on as well between this height and this height right over here. Yeah, again, more of that negative space is being created especially when we look at it from, say, this angle right here. Well, let's look at it from the top. Yeah, there's just a lot of dead space. There's not really a lot I can do with this uh, dead space right here, given the so the length that, there, that this dominant shape has. Well, that's kind of interesting. That gives some more, it kind of chunks out this big space right here. But now, 
this form no longer complements this in the same way it was beforehand. So I do like how this one complements the, the length of this shape. Yeah, I'm pretty satisfied with that. I think this is pretty cool. Um, I could see this as kind of a nice pleasant museum or some sort. Okay. So I'll just take this, I'll move it out of the way. Oop. And I think I'll do one more and then we can, uh, I could just wrap things up. Let's see. Let's grab, let's look at it from the side here. So I went with something pretty long right here, something pretty long right here. So maybe we could just do something that's just large in general, not being super long. Okay. And then the secondary shape, the subdominant form, I want to be maybe super thin. I think, yeah, I wanted to play with this one right here. And then the subordinate form, I want to be really, really small. And I think this Q right here would be pretty cool to play with. Let's see what comes of it. Oh boy. Exciting. Okay, here we go. So already I kind of like the, the shapes, the kind of these, um, comparative shapes happening. So again, we'll start with the dominant and the subdominant shapes. I can almost leave it right here. It's so satisfying. There's a lot of good negative space happening. And again, I want the secondary form to just be kind of complementing the, f the primary form. What if I put this down here? Okay, that's not very interesting. If I bring it up here, for instance, so there's a little bit of space down below. Oh man. Now she talks about kind of thinking as if you were a dancer, and I kind of feel like if something was this long, it wouldn't be able to hold very well. So I kind of feel like pushing in a little bit, piercing it further is pretty useful. I'm thinking actually something like this. Let's bring this into play now. Right. Okay, I'll bring this over here. Let's look at it from the side, see what's up. There we go. There we go. I sometimes forget the, my orientation here. So if I put that right there, hmm. Yeah, that's not very interesting. It's only like really affecting this backside here, which is okay. That's pretty cool. Kind of these overlapping forms. There's a lot more kind of interest happening right here. And now that's looking like a button or some type of tool. Not what I was going for. Let's see, so maybe I could use this block right here as a sort of counterbalance. Okay. Oh, maybe it should be up higher. Okay. And bring this out right here. Hmm. I want, if I'm going to be doing it from this position, I want this negative space right here to have a sort of connection to this negative space right here. Maybe something like that. Maybe something up here. Hmm, yeah. Let's pull this back a little bit further. Okay. Now we have these, this kind of relationship forming on the backside. Hmm. Not happy with that just yet. I did like all the shapes kind of working clumped together. Okay, let's play with this right here. Bring that in just a little bit. Okay, and this one as well. Hmm. So that's actually building a really interesting shape right here. I like this happening here. It's kind of a nice balance with what's happening over here. Now, 
I'm kind of bound to this this length. I mean, of course, I could go ahead and scale it or whatever and do whatever I want with this if I really wanted to, but I'm just gonna like stick with in the little playground of playing with the shape as I've I've created it. Okay, let's flip this upwards and see what kind of how we feel about this. So that's pretty cool. Oh, that's pretty satisfying. There is a certain balance happening right there. It doesn't look very good from this side though, when this shape is just um, exposing all this. I don't want to delete it. There we go. And now I'm going to be using this secondary shape to cut into the into both shapes and see what comes of it. Hmm. I actually like that quite a bit. There's something happening with this cube and it kind of cutting between both sides of this secondary shape that's giving a kind of an interesting experience. Let's do that. Okay, let's bring this in just a little bit further. Now a little closer yeah there's a really nice kind of situation happening inside of here that's pretty pleasing there's a couple that i found and of course uh they'd come out to very very different experiences or expressions if i were to do that this is, this one's pretty wild right here i mean gosh if i were to put it right here maybe play with these kind of shapes here that one's pretty fun too i think grouping them together like this Having them all intersecting each other is working really well with this exercise, this composition here. So where they, these two larger forms meet, there's some information right there. Maybe too much information right there. Let's bring this up a little bit further. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, okay, I could create a little NATO space as well. If I were to bring this over here, let's do that. Hmm. That's pretty satisfying as well. Maybe I could balance it just a little bit further if I were to bring it up here. That's pretty satisfying too. Definitely the space, this NATO space that's being created when the cube overlaps this larger this this middle size space is very very nice so i suppose one way i could add some more interest i could go back to that but maybe creating more interesting negative space on the right side as well and going back to doing this here now this is just a lot happening so this side has a lot of corners and this side has a lot of corners too not as many as that side but it feels like it's stealing from it so i i definitely like the harmony of this right here we'll play with the position one more time it's a little too drab i think that's a little too kind of tooth like i do like um this for sure Okay, bring that down. Yeah, I think that's pretty fun. Okay, maybe I could change the sizing or the the overhang of that cube and see what comes of it. Okay, let's bring this back a little bit further. Now we're looking like Boba Fett's helmet with his little uh, like antenna up. What if I were to bring this out over here? You know, I really feel like where it was beforehand, right in, towards the middle. Yeah, right there. That was pretty cool. Kind of cuts it up into thirds as well. And then finally, what I can do is just play with the distance between these two. See if anything comes of it. Um, yeah, it's a good harmony right there. Still cutting it almost on the third, maybe closer to half. Great, I think those are some satisfying compositions. So let's take a look at these and see kind of what I've uh, come up with and I'll just kind of analyze them real quick and 
this has been pretty fun. I'll, I definitely encourage you to try this out. Um, we're just simplifying all these um, shapes that can be uh, complicated, and we're just trying to give them life by arranging them in a very interesting way. So maybe I could bring these all to the same height here. And then we can get a sense of them one side by side. Yeah, I suppose if I wanted to go further, I could even, you know, arrange these shapes in different, uh, in their own kind of relationship together too. Something like this. Okay, with a little overhang like that. See, it doesn't look very good. I don't really like that when it's buzzing over like that. I think of all of them, my least favorite is this one that I'm playing with right here. It's by the first one I did. And although it has some kind of interesting kind of uh, directions going on and little nooks and crannies, it just doesn't really feel that, that good. I do like what I created right here. This kind of feels like a, saying a museum or some type of long building with this kind of interesting balance between both sides and they're on different sides of this long piece and their different um, heights and their different scales as well. And this one's fun. This feels more like a, maybe like a commercial building or some type of office building. It has a nice like little view at the very top. The cube's a little bit boring, but it's pretty cool. So I think in future exercises, so the next one is, let's check this out here. The next exercise is on curvilinear forms or volumes. So this actually starts to present more kind of interesting shapes and opportunities. So whereas the one that we just did was just static axes. This one has different angles going on. It has hemispheres and cones and we have cylinders going on too. So there's much more kind of interesting abstractions happening from that as well. So I hope you enjoyed this. It wasn't much talking. It was more kind of just thinking my way through it. And if you're looking for just something to do, just to kick the time for like an hour or something like that, um, if you're a 2D artist, just start drawing up some shapes and then play with those shapes in different spaces and um, relationships with each other. Of course, if you have Blender or any other 3D program, you can whip together a bunch of shapes real quick. She recommends 50, but you know, right here, I only did like nine. So if you just want to get into it real quick and have fun, that's a great way to go. And I'm thinking the idea is, you know, if I were to do this a bunch of times or let's say like once a week, and I, especially as I get into kind of the more interesting shapes, like the ones I'm showing you, the curvilinear forms. Um, my mind starts to think more and more and more into these kind of like abstract situations uh, and arrangement of shapes that is just uh, absolutely fun to you know play around with. And it could lead to helping build more kind of spatial relationships in 3D space as well, which obviously is happening right here. It's really beautiful uh, curves and shapes happening and kind of the negative space that's being created here is awesome. So check her out. I think this is um, a really good find. I really appreciate uh, Conjure Cat for sharing it with me. And again, if you want to support my work, Hick at Nunk is the place to go, as well as Slef, Slef's Refs on Gumroad too. So cheers, everyone, and catch you later.